what's up guys the Infine variable here and I just wanna preface this video by saying uh, I know I haven't uploaded a lot that's because school is a little crazy but uh, school's kinda calmed down I'll be able to upload more um, and I just wanna say thank you guys for staying subscribed uh, we actually hit over 100 subscribers recently which is just huge I never thought I'd actually hit it um, you know I don't really deserve it I haven't been uploading that much but that's all going to change. This episode we're going to be focusing on scoreboards as well as scoreboards that you can have update constantly so you can have players balance as well as you can have scrollable lines on the scoreboard which I'll be referencing as dynamic scoreboards. Uh, but I want to know what you guys want for the next episodes because this episode is going to be, this, this series is going to be uh, teaching you guys what you guys want to know. So I want to know what you guys want to learn so feel free to leave a comment down below on what you want to see uh how to code next all right guys so um i do have a, a plugin for intellij id uh that does generate a plugin for me i select it when i create a new project uh so as you can see it actually generated this all for me which is very nice it also makes a file called pom.xml. I might put a download link in the description. So here's how you edit it. Once you create it, um, I'm not going to be showing you how to create it, but once you do create it in your pom.xml, this is basically maven. This is basically jar file dependencies, like how we'd have to import bucket, but you don't actually have to download the jar and import it. This is kind of like remote importing. So I changed this. This was like one point, oh, whoops. This was this was 1.10.2 uh, R01, and I changed it to 1.8.8. Uh, oh, to 1.8.8. That's how you get a 1.8 version. So, guys, uh, I'm going to be showing this in a new class. We're going to name our new class scoreboard.java. And I'm not going to make it implement listener. I'm going to make a method. So, public void send board. We're going to take some arguments. We're going to take a player named P, uh, so we, that's going to be the player we're going to send it to. So, scoreboard, uh, actually I should rename this class. Don't name it scoreboard because you're going to be inputting, um, you're going to be importing scoreboard, so I'm going to name it uh, tutorial scoreboard. There we go. So, scoreboard. Uh, scoreboard SB equals new scoreboard. All right, so um, I'm back. Sorry about that. I had to go do something. So we're gonna do scoreboard manager uh, manager equals bucket dot get scoreboard manager. So the scoreboard manager uh, from bucket is the default scoreboard manager. This handles all scoreboards, you know, from command blocks or stuff like that. Uh, so we're going to do uh, manager dot, we're going to do scoreboard, I'll call mine uh, board equals manager dot get new scoreboard. We're going to do board dot, um, nope, we're going to do p dot set scoreboard board and the next step hold on let me just look through my notes all right so the next step is we do board dot register new objective uh, I'll call it tutorial board this is how it's referenced within the code so if you do have command blocks that will change it uh, it will be referenced as tutorial board uh, and it's going to be dummy. It's going to be a dummy type. Next, we do board.set. Oh, no. Uh, my bad. Okay. It's um, objective. Uh, I'm going to call it obj. So, objective obj equals board.register new objective. Then we do obj.set display name. So this is going to be the name of your scoreboard. This is what's going to be at the tip top of the scoreboard. So um, I'm going to name it NCNL Tutorial. 
if you don't know what I'm doing, I do reference chat color in a couple of my other tutorials, so you can go take a look at that. All right, so next you can have a string. Let's say string name equals uh, chat color dot translate alternate color codes. All right. So this is going to be our first line of our scoreboard. So I'm going to do and r and l name and then plus p dot get name. All right. So you can have a string, and what you're going to do is you're going to do obj dot get score name dot set score. Let's say 15. So 15, that is the number on the side of the scoreboard. Uh, so you have to have the numbers on the side, sadly. Um, the higher the number, the higher it will be on the scoreboard. Um, so we're going to set it as 15 because we want it kind of high on the scoreboard. I might change that number depending on how many lines I do. Uh, so you do objective that sets that get score name. So basically this turns it to a score. This casts because uh, you need to have it as a score. obg.getScore returns a score and it gets it from a string. So you can do name and then the player name. Uh, let's have a constant, you know, we can have something from a config file. Uh, what I'll do is I'm going to do the messy way of creating a config file. So you create a new file, config.yml. Let's just do. Um, I'll just do amount colon 10. All right. And in our on enable, we will save default config. All right. So we're going to do um, dart 31. Oh. All right. Uh, I'm just going to make a method to get our main class. This is um, this is how you do it. So you do. Um, uh, Darth Teddy One plugin. So Darth Teddy One is the name of the class because uh, it generated li like that. I probably said it like that in the settings by accident. Uh, and then we'll do in our on enable you do plugin equals this. And then we make a method public public static your class name. So in this case Darth Teddy One. Get uh, I'll call it instance. And then we'll return plugin. Uh, oh, my bad. All right, and we'll return plugin. Why is that? Oh, you want to do static up here. There you go. So now we do uh, Darth City One dot instance dot get config dot get int amount all right so uh, we'll do string balance equals check color dot translate alternate color codes so this is going to be getting it from the balance this is going to be getting it from the config default of balance will be 10 um, Obviously, you can hook into other plugins, which, if you guys actually want to know, I can make the next episode uh, in-depth tutorial, not in-depth, I can make it a tutorial on using APIs, public libraries, and where you can find uh, the APIs for a bunch of different plugins, just so you can, like, mess around, use their method. I know a bunch of plugins like Action Bar, uh, Tab, Title Manager, all of those really have very nice API so you can do that type of stuff. Alright, so uh, we have here string balance equals chat color that translate alternate color codes. Next uh, we're gonna do obj dot set score uh, dot obj dot get score balance dot set score uh, thirteen. So uh, actually, I'm, I'm going to change these to, uh, we'll, we'll have a three-line scoreboard. So we'll do three, one, and I want a space. So a quick method for a space, we can do obj.setScore. Uh, the problem is um, if a score is the same, so let's say you put a space, um, if and then you, you want multiple spaces. If you have two spaces, it'll overwrite them because you can't have the same score. So a little trick is you do... 
that set score chat color dot dot aqua let's say you take any chat color dot two string uh that's what I do and it returns nothing because aqua dot two string it shows up on the scoreboard as nothing so which is perfect also with the with the minecraft plugin it actually shows the colors when you do chat color very nice uh all right let me just take one look last look over this all right uh my bad we want to have the p dot set scoreboard down at the bottom so under everything p dot set scoreboard board all right now so this sends it to the player once if you just use this method it'll send it to them once so we're going to do something called a runnable runnables there are two types um that we're primarily going to be focusing on one right now uh, called a repeating task so I'll explain to this so bucket get dot get scheduler dot schedule sync repeating task it takes the arguments plugin so this new runnable and then I press that and it instantly puts in the method for the runnable all right now I'm gonna go through this so you're getting the bucket scheduling manager and you're scheduling a repeating task. Uh, it takes an argument plugin. All right. So what we're doing is a repeating task takes the first number, which has to be a long. So let's say one. That's how long it'll take to execute it in ticks. So it's one tick, which is 20 ticks. It's one second. So this is running every 20th of a second. That's going to cause lag. So the first number is how long it takes to actually execute the first time. The second number is how long it should wait to do it again. So we have this on the unenabled. This is going to be running 24/7 because we're not. As long as the server's up, this will be running because we're never canceling it. So what we're going to do is for player p colon bucket dot get online players. So this is something called a for loop. A for loop, um, we're casting player to all the online players meaning we're taking every player on the server and we're doing it to them uh but we're only referencing it as p so let's say if i do p dot send message you know hello it would send everyone on the server a message hello every second so what we're going to do is i'm going to change this change this to a public static void uh we're going to do so your class dot send board p so this will send them an updated version of the board. Uh, the config should be fine. If the config is not fine, I will change it. But if you guys are going to do it, you should not use this method of creating a config. I do have an episode on creating configs. So if you have trouble there, I could uh, put that in the description. Yeah, I'll put that in the description. So I'm going to export this and well, we'll see it on the server. Oh my god, okay, I just realized we forgot one line under this where you're casting the objective to dummy. OBJ dot set display slot display so slot dot sidebar. We want to make sure this is showing up on the side of their screen. Now there are different display slots, so you can actually have in the player list, which is the tab below their name and sidebar. So you can actually do some really cool things below their name. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's how Mindplex does their new title system in 1.8. Um, Alright, so now let's try it. Alright guys, so as you can see our scoreboard has loaded with the tutorial, the name, and the balance. The balance has loaded successfully. Uh, so if I go into the config file, there we go. Okay, let me, there we go. All right, so the amount is 10 right now. Let's change that to 30. All right, so we saved it. Now, let's go back in game. And so as you can see, the balance is not updating because it's the config only saves when uh, the config isn't saved. So if we had saved the config through the code, um, it would al always update. Like if I do a reload right now, oh sorry, I hit the mic right there. If I do a reload right now, there you go, it'll change to 30. Uh, so if you do it, do it like the normal config system, like I have, uh, showed, like I've showed you in the past, where it does set set stuff and save stuff, 
it'll actually auto update as the config does which that's you know it's very useful um one thing to note there is a max character limit per uh little line that you have uh i'm i'm inclined to say it's 46 it might be different you can always google it uh but if you do get a console error that says uh either overflow or exceeds limit um then you that's probably what you're doing so you're want to want to check all of your lines anyways guys thank you guys for watching put your suggestions down below of what i should teach you guys how to code next have a good day night or whatever see you in the next episode